But we begin with our big story. House Republicans under mounting political pressure as their razor-thin majority shrinks even further. Democrat Tom Suozzi winning the special election on in New York's Long Island last night, flipping the seat once held by disgraced former Congressman George Santos. That means House Republicans can now only afford two defectors in any party-line vote. The GOP conference also facing questions over its rejection of a bipartisan border deal negotiated between the White House and the Senate. It's also refused to consider a $95 billion foreign aid bill that already cleared the Senate and would provide more money to Ukraine. House Republicans last night did manage to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas by a single vote, despite providing no evidence he committed an impeachable crime. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson today saying his members are now working to provide solutions on the border and Ukraine, but offering no specifics. So what we're doing right now is we, the House is working its will. The House Republican Conference we just met an, an hour ago uh, with all the members, and there are lots of ideas on the table of how to address these issues. We have to actually solve the problems and not just uh, take political posturing as, as has happened. Meanwhile, the White House trolling Speaker Johnson today, posting this Valentine's Day card to social media, reading, quote, roses are red, violets are blue, the border deal was crushed because of you. Joining me now, ABC News Deputy Political Director Avery Harper. Avery, how are you today? Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start with this special election. Speaker Johnson already having trouble getting all of his members on the same page. What can Americans expect with an even slimmer GOP majority in the House? I think that Americans can expect for this Congress that has been uh, notoriously unproductive for it to be even more difficult for them to pass uh, legislation. Uh, as you mentioned before, uh, the GOP can now only afford for two Republicans to defect on party line votes. And we know that uh, Republicans have made it a point not to work across the aisle with Republicans, uh, with Democrats, excuse me, on numerous uh, agenda items. Uh, and in fact, uh, I mean, it was the reason why Mike Johnson is become the Speaker of the House. And so I, I think it's going to be even more difficult for them to pass some legislation. Now, we've all seen how difficult of a time Speaker Mike Johnson has had attempting to steer his party forward all on the same bus, especially after yesterday's impeachment of Secretary of Homeland Alejandro Mayorkas. Now, how tough does that job now become with the reality of an even slimmer Republican majority in the House? Right. It becomes uh, really tough. Listen, if uh, Tom Suozzi was sworn in and was able to vote on that uh, uh, impeachment vote yesterday, it would have been a tie. Uh, and so uh, that presents a real issue for Mike Johnson and for Republicans uh, if they are trying to push forward on uh, conservative agenda items. Uh, you know, this is uh, Tom Suozzi's win really eating away at that razor thin, that very, very tiny majority that Republicans have. Now, Avery, a source telling ABC News that Speaker Johnson has requested to meet one-on-one -on -one with President Biden to find a path forward on U.S. foreign aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. But the source says that the president has refused. Now, does the speaker have any leverage left right now? Right. Well, we saw in the White House briefing today, Karine Jean-Pierre, the, the White House press secretary, she said that uh, at this point, Mike Johnson is negotiating with himself. Uh, the fact is that the, the bipartisan border deal is the result of a fight that House Republicans won. They wanted for uh, the uh, border crisis to be addressed, uh, and, and they got that, a bipartisan uh, deal, uh, conservative legislatures uh, working to make sure that deal was ironclad. And it was because of his leadership and pressure uh, from Donald Trump, uh, and even some of these House members citing political reasons, not wanting for uh, Biden to look good during an election year, uh, that that bill did not happen, that that passage did not happen. And so uh, there is a, a lack of a feeling that he is operating in good faith, and that's going to make it difficult for him to move forward. Now, Avery, I want to ask you one more question. Swazi, he's a Democrat who won his race focusing mainly on immigration concerns, a hallmark campaign issue for the GOP. Is this a bad sign for Republicans moving forward? Well, listen, I think that this was a very special case. Uh, you have to remember that this is uh, this was uh, New York's third congressional district. This was the seat that George Santos held. Uh, and so this is a Republican Party that was reeling from scandal. Uh, also, Tom Suozzi is a special sort of candidate. He's somebody who held that seat before for three terms. Uh, he is someone who is a known quantity uh, in that area. Not only was he a congressman, but he was a county executive. He was uh, a mayor in a town uh, in that community. And so uh, he is someone who came in as a known 
known quantity and was able to uh, rack up the support he needed to take that seat back and to flip it blue. Uh, I do think that for uh, Republicans, as they are uh, trying to maintain their razor thin or grow uh, their majority in the House, it's going to be difficult uh, when you have a, a, a conference that is so uh, focused on ideological purity, uh, when you have an enormous amount of pressure to embrace the far right. That is not going to do well in districts like this one. So it'll be interesting to see what it turns out uh, in November. All right, Avery, stick with us right now. We're going to bring in the big story to the rest of our panel. Joining me with Avery Tay is ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host Mike Muse, ABC News contributor and former Republican Congresswoman from Virginia, Barbara Comstock, and Democratic strategist Alencia Johnson. Now, Barbara, I want to start with you. Let's talk about your party right now. We just saw Swazi run on immigration, a historically Republican talking point, and win. What does this mean for your party ahead of the 2024 election? Well, it's a big problem. And listen, Tom was on my hall. He's a great guy. It was a win for normal. And he did what Republicans aren't allowed to do. He ran his own campaign. He distinguished himself from both President Biden and from his party. And he did what he needed to do for his district. Republicans aren't being allowed to do that. They're being forced to toe the MAGA line all the time and all stick together and do whatever dumb thing that Marjorie Taylor Greene wants them to do, like vote on the impeachment of, you know, Mayorkas yesterday. That's not helpful if you're in a swing district. And, you know, so that is going to be a big problem going forward. Now, Alencia, I'm coming to you now. For Democrats, looking at what just happened in New York's congressional race, is this a switch in immigration stances, a viable strategy moving forward? Listen, I think this is actually helpful for Democrats because what is happening between this race, what happened with the impeachment vote, what happened with the bill last week, actually is able to put us not only on the defense, but on the offense about the immigration policies that we believe in. Listen, the Democrats have been talking about bipartisan legislation, obvious Republicans want to continue to play politics. And so as they've seen in this race, it is going to be a losing issue. And there's a lot of evidence for Democrats to use, as I keep saying, cut the campaign ads. because You have all of the GOP members talking about this on the record. Now, Mike, we saw how weather was a big issue related to turnout in this special election. What else can you foresee affecting turnout down the road? I don't think weather is going to become an issue come November in the mere fact of once November comes, I think that is when America is going to recognize the high stakes that we're in. In particular, we are such a divided nation on partisanship. Uh, the presidential election race is going to come down to the margins and it's going to come down to independent voters. And what they're going to be looking at is who can handle immigration the best. Obviously, reproductive rights will definitely be top on the agenda, but coming up on the very close second will be immigration. And if the Democrats can take a hold and own that, that will work to their advantage, and particularly within the suburbs of major cities that are possibly facing these immigration complications. And it's going to be a challenge to see how can the GOP reclaim that narrative if they can at all. In particular, the independents are really too going to be looking at what we are geopolitically uh, with NATO and also too with Ukraine in order to not to prevent a larger scale operation where troops on the ground will have to possibly uh, be defending our NATO partners uh, against Russia. And so the independents are really looking at that very closely. And Avery, I want to end with you now. Expanding Republicans' majority in the House is proving to be an uphill climb. What message, if any, can Republicans cling to that can help them convince voters to support them come November? Well, I think that we're going to see Republicans uh, continue to hammer uh, the border and, and blame Democrats uh, for the issue of the border, uh, even if it means them not uh, passing legislation to address it uh, this year ahead of the, the 2024 elections. Uh, look, I, I don't think that uh, what happened in uh, New York's third congressional district is necessarily reflective of uh, what's going to happen in suburban swing districts across the country. Again, I mentioned the special dynamics uh, of that race. Uh, the the fact that this is a, a Republican Party that was reeling from scandal after George Santos, the fact that Tom Swazi was a known quantity uh, in that district. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Mike, Barbara, Alencia, and Avery, thank you as always. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.